sing for a minute? I knew it would get some announcements. Hi, I'm DJ. Welcome to church. We made it. I know, right? We made it to church. I'm so excited about that because it's so cool to be in the house of God. I think so, anyway. Anyway, let's see. We, we are on YouTube. We are on the Facebook, so you can see what's going on. We also have um, emails, so if you're, if you're not getting emails, go ahead and sign up that tells you what's coming up in church, but if that's also where our prayer chain is, if you need prayer, go ahead and um, go on there and you can get prayer for, uh, for whatever is ailing you. There you go. Um, let's see, youth tonight at 6 o'clock. Hey guys, if you need a ride, let Danae or Eric know, and we've got that wonderful van, and we can pick you up and, and get, you to, get you to youth group, and that's always such a fun thing, you know, I tell you what. I remember youth, it was a long time ago, but <laughs> it was fun, so there you go. This car show is this week. We have plenty of water. Thank you for bringing water. I tell you what, that's awesome. We have enough water, but we need people to give it away, so there's a sign-up sheet out there in Grand Central, and that's fun, too, because, you know, you get to see people, and you get to see the cars, and you get to just have a wonderful time. They're going to have a little prayer area, too, this time, so if you if somebody needs prayer, like we do here and, and our quieter times with the um, altar prayer, you can have a prayer with people who are coming in. I mean, it's, they don't even have to go to church. We bring church to them. I know, right? That's what a concept. There you go. Okay. Uh, speaking of the car show, we usually have the guys meet on the third Saturday of the month. Well, this week, you know, you're going to go to the car show instead and, and help them there. <laughs> so, so no new man Bible study on Saturday, guys. So there you go. Um, but Friday on, the, on October 4th, we're going to have a fun do. We're going to have the gathering. There you go. You can see what's coming up. There's country swing dancing, and it's decorate your own little pumpkin. You know, Safeway's got those little mini pumpkins right now, so go ahead and get that, and there's uh, decorating supplies will be provided, but go ahead and bring a little pumpkin and, and get ready for fall. It should be fun. It's going to be a good time because it's on 10-4, good buddy. <laughs> All right, there, there you go. Um, October is... <laughs> October is Missions Month. I'm excited about that. So the, the, we have a fifth Sunday in September, the 29th, and we usually have a potluck. Well, because we're going to be ushering in Missions Month, we're going to have our Missions Potluck to kick it off this time. So I know that's always such a good thing. So bring something. Start thinking now, something either from your heritage or some, a country that you're praying for, that kind of opens it up to American food. <laughs> so, so if you go to Walmart and you pick up something, oh, I got this, this is American. So there you go, but that's gonna be on the 29th of September over here in the hospitality room. It's always a fun time. And we'll put little tags and say, well, this is from this country, this is from that country. So there you go. Well, let's have our ushers come forward and, and we'll take up our offering, our tithes and offering. I just wanted to mention, too, our Tuesday Bible study is back at 6.30 over here in the hospitality room. We are in the book of Daniel. We're in chapter 7, and we will probably be there for several months just because of how, how we like to, you know, plow through that. I mean, we, get, we go deep. We go deep, and it's good. It's a good thing. So let's go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, you are so awesome. You own the cattle on a thousand hills. You provide sunshine and water and air. You are our source. And we thank you, Lord, for all of the things that you provide to us. Let us show you our appreciation by just giving a portion of, the, of what you have provided to us, just a portion of that back. And just to say thank you for, for giving us food and shelter in the air we breathe. Oh, you are so awesome. You are so good. And we thank you, Lord. And we just ask that you would take our tithes. You would take our offerings and you would multiply them for your kingdom here in Morgan County and beyond our borders that it would be like ripples on a pond and just going out and touching so many lives. We thank you, Lord. I ask that you would bless both gift and giver alike in your mighty name, Jesus. Amen.
we have a video today? Don't we have a video today? Okay, let's show that video. Good morning, church family. How are you today? My name is Cheryl, and I'm also known as the Change Star Lady, and these are my Change Star Girls. I'm Sadie. I'm Phoebe. And, oh, <laughs> and my Change Star Boy. <laughs> this is Sage. He's the sweetest, isn't he? <laughs> we have a mission. Um, we like to, you know, keep you from being weighed down by all the heavy change in dollars that you're carrying around, and we like to turn it into blessings for others. So this month we are blessing Sherry Malott. She is um, just, she's a wonderful person in this community. She gives to others so much. Um, 34 years ago, she was in an accident that um, she had a spinal cord injury, and she's been in a wheelchair ever since then. But she has not ever let that stop her from anything. In fact, she has three grown daughters. She has two grandsons. Sure. Two, she has two grandsons. Um, and she also is a co-founder of Freedom to Cowboy Up, which is the therapeutic writing center in Akron. Um, she also does, um, she's an assistant to do physical therapy with kids in the school district. Um, she just, she does so much. But in 34 years, she, her shoulders are wearing out because she's always used a manual wheelchair. So now she needs to be using elect her electric wheelchair 90% of the time. Her shoulders are just to the point where They've done all the repairs that they can do. So she doesn't have a vehicle that the electric wheelchair works with. And so she's, they're trying to get money so they can get her a vehicle that she can use her electric wheelchair with. So that's what we're doing this month. We are trying to help her. So their vehicles are expensive, as you know. So if you can dig deep, let's just bless her with as much as we can. And please bring your spare change in dollars so we can show you more lots so we can help her gain independent again. Thank you everybody for your generosity.
Good morning, everyone. If you are able to stand, if you'd join us, please, for worship this morning.
darkest valleys, you're always there. And when we're up on that mountaintop, you're there also. You're the light that we all look for. Oh, I've heard a thousand stories of what they
God. Do this with me this morning. If you'll just lift your hands all across this building for a moment. Put aside any distractions that may be uh, taking you away from the presence of God. Get along with the Lord for just a moment. Just lift your hands and surrender this morning as we're asking God to meet our needs, but we're also rejoicing for what he has done, what he's doing. Wow. He's moving in the hearts of the believers today. He's stirring the hearts of those that are struggling. He's encouraging, he's replacing, he's restoring. Come on church, lift your hands for just a moment. Just surrender and ask God, ask God for a greater greater understanding, a greater outpouring, a new, a new refreshing, I will rejoice. Make that your declaration today. Make that your, your, uh, your prayer. You may have come in this morning with a lot of heartache and discouragement, but you're going to declare, you're going to demand, and you're going to stand on the firm foundation that I will rejoice and be glad. No matter what's coming my way, I'm going to rejoice in the presence of God Almighty. Would you give him a clap offering this morning? Because he is worthy of all of our praise. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I mean, I'm happy to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. Take, take a moment this morning. Uh, to shake some hands to our children's church. We're so thankful for our children's church workers and nursery. Please appreciate them when you're dropping off your kids and you're picking them up. And uh, please let them know that you love them and appreciate them. They're dismissed. Nursery's dismissed. Today, we're going to ask you to go and shake 22 hands instead of 15. 22. Off you go. Everybody, out of your seat. Out of your seat. And going to give it into your hands. If you are afraid to attack, go down to the camp with your servant, Pura, and listen to what they are saying. Afterward, you will be encouraged to attack the camp. So he and Pura and his servants went down to the outpost of the camp. The Midianites, the Amalekites, and all the other eastern peoples had settled in the valley thick as locusts. Their camels could no more be counted than the sand on the seashore. Getting arrived, just as a man was telling his, a friend of his, his dream, I had a dream, he was saying. A round loaf of barley bread came tumbling into the Midianite camp. It struck the tent with such force that the tent overturned and collapsed. His friend responded, this can be nothing other than the sword of Gideon, son of Joash, the Israelite. God has given the Midianites and the whole camp into his hands. It hasn't even happened yet, but here it is. When Gideon heard the dream and its interpretation, he bowed down and worshipped. I want you to pay attention to that in verse 15. He bowed down, down and worshipped. He returned to the camp of Israel and called out, Get up, the Lord has given the Midianite camp into your hands. Verse 16, dividing the 300 men into three companies, he placed trumpets and empty jars into the hands of all of them with torches inside. Remember, there was 22,000 people that showed up. Now he's down to 300. The reason why the 22 uh, left and why God, why, why God gave him that clear instruction was because those other 22,000 people that showed up were half-hearted. I'd rather have a church full of people that are full-hearted than a bunch of people that are half-hearted that don't give a flying rip about anybody's salvation. We can do more damage to the enemy's kingdom, enemy's wrath, with a couple hundred sold-out, full-hearted people than a quarter or half-hearted people that don't care about anything. No, for reals. <laughs> Dividing the 300 men into three companies, he placed trumpets and empty jars into the hands of all of them with torches inside. Watch, the, watch me, he told them. Follow my lead. When I get to the edge of the camp, do exactly as I do. When I and all who are with me blow our trumpets, then from all around the camp, blow yours. Watch this. And shout. Another praise and worship there. Shout for the Lord and for, your, and for Gideon. You may be seated. Father, I thank you for the awesome presence that we have felt during worship today. And Lord, I pray for the next few moments, these brief moments, Lord, that you will speak, Lord, to us clearly, concisely, Lord, that you'll stir our hearts, Lord, with conviction unto you, Lord, of the things that we need to say and do and change in our own lives and our own path, that we will see continued success in our hearts and our adventure serving you. In Jesus' name, amen. So as we, we try to wrap up this today, as we turn our attention to this awesome story, if you will, of 
the life of Gideon and the call of Gideon. And we're getting some truths from this, this, these couple of chapters. There's so much more to it. But I want to try to accomplish a few things today, if you will. And we have discussed already and established greatly here in the last couple of weeks that Gideon is indeed being called as a mighty warrior. And it shows that the Lord sees the best in people. It's also a challenge and a call that he saw Gideon's potential beyond the fear that he was experiencing. And sometimes there is experiencing, we experience those things that, that struggle in our hearts and it overcomes those things and fear sets place in our hearts. So today as we see Gideon as a mighty warrior on whatever challenge or whatever calling God has placed on your life, he will be with us, he will guide us, and he will direct us all the way through. We talked about three major themes, God encouraged him, God directed him, and God transformed him. We are reminded through this story today that the Lord is with us. How many believe that this morning? That the Lord is with us. We need to know and be reminded today that whatever battle that we may be getting ready to go into, whatever calling that God may be showing into our lives, whatever place that we may be in this adventure, that God is always with us. He has always been with us from the beginning. He's been with us through every adventure, every trial, every heartache, every valley, every mountaintop. God has been faithful to be with us. I believe that this is a room full of people that can testify today that God has been with you. He has always been with us. Even when we feel far from him, he has always been with us. We need to be reminded today that he is always with us in those battles, those mountaintops and those valleys. When we struggle, he'll pick us up. It is him and him alone. We cannot, I just want to park here for a minute. We cannot be dependent on people's opinions to satisfy the dependence that we have on God. People will say one thing and mean another. They'll look at you right in the face and say, you're the greatest thing on earth. And then two seconds later, you're the worst person in the world. People are funny. People change their opinions like the wind blows around here in Morgan County. People don't know what they really want because they haven't figured it out for themselves. So stop being dependent on what everybody else has to say about your life, but rather get a hold of God and ask him to guide you and to direct you for every step of the way. He is with you in those battles, and that can be a battle as well. He's the one that picks us up in those struggles. When you're, when you're uh, strong and weak, uh, strong, he'll, uh, when you're, sorry, when you're weak, he'll make you strong, and when you're, you're lost, he'll guide you. When you're feeling hopeless, he will bring you the hope and the strength that you need in your life. And I believe today that there are a few of you that are really needing a victory. And I know that since I've been here the last couple of years, we've talked about that in a significant amount of time. And God has not released me from saying any of that at some point in the sermon during, throughout the week because there are still people struggling with the same old battle. And God wants you to be free in Jesus' name. I can't make you free. The church can't make you free. Quit putting all that pressure on the church. That's not God. That is terrible teaching. What, that, what you have to do is get a hold of God for yourself. The church is a safe place. It will be with you. But the church is not required to make you free. It is God in the church that will help you be free. Let's get away from some of those bad teachings and do the research ourselves and get a hold of God through his presence, his power, and everything that he does for us to set us free. How is it that we can go through battles in our life and all hell is breaking loose and we still have a smile on our face and we're still standing strong and we're still standing up? It is because it has been the power and the power of the Holy Spirit and through praise and worship and Bible reading and doing the things that God has called us to do, to still stand in the middle of a victory and have the battle that you need to have, a victory that you need to have in that battle. God always says with us, to us, I am with you. When you are sick, he will bring us healing. When things are out of control, he'll bring order to chaos. When order comes to your house and when order comes to your life, Please, for the love of all things good, stop undoing it. No amens now. Well, everything is nice and calm. Let me see what I can do to undo all that. Stop it. Look at your neighbor tell him, stop it. I've said that before. Stop it. You're too scared. Stop it. Some of you enjoy unraveling the, the, the order. 
What can I do to have more chaos in my life? But even in that, God will bring, uh, bring healing. You know what that is? It's a lack of healing in your heart. And he's with us. He is with us always. What is it that God's looking for when he's looking for a mighty warrior, a champion? Well, I'm going to tell you. and You better put your seatbelt on. Does he look for great ability? Does he look for talents? Does he look for great minds? Does he look for high standards in society, a big fat bank account, or a great name? That's a good place for everybody to say no. no. What we see here is that Gideon committed to God and his people. That's it. Committed to God and his people. Reluctant, nervous, hiding, but he was still committed to God and his people. Willing to serve no matter the resistance or the circumstance. <laughs> no matter the willing, he was willing, no matter the situation, the resistance, or the circumstance. How many have ever tried to share about Jesus Christ and you've had pushback? Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Those that aren't raising your hand, you need to get busy. <laughs> Jesus is coming. We got people to see get into the kingdom. How many have ever tried to share something about Jesus Christ and you've had pushback from family, friends, relatives, work people? And so you just give up. Don't give up. Ask God to give you some wisdom. Ask God to give you some wisdom. I have a cool story, but I know we're being recorded and I'll, I'll share the story when we're uh, possibly at the end of the sermon. Uh, but I've got a cool story about that, about where you stay faithful in the marketplace. You stay faithful in the marketplace. You stay faithful with those people that don't want anything to do with God, and you'll see that turn around. Boy, I got a great story. I want to tell that. Don't let me forget. I'll tell you that story on the way out. Don't forget. Okay. Gideon was faithful in spite of setbacks. He was faithful in spite of doubt and what people were saying about him. Imagine, he goes down and he eavesdrops into the camp. First of all, that's a lot of bravery, going down into the enemy's camp. And he's listening to what they're saying and what they're planning. And then he realizes that they're in fear because of the dream. I'm going to get to that here, I promise. And I'm going to, I'm, full disclosure, I'm going to go public a couple minutes longer than I normally do. I let you out last week about 15, 12 minutes early, and so I'm going to make up that 12 minutes today. <laughs> well, we're not keeping track. Some of you are. <laughs> Gideon and his team were willing to overcome their own faults to put God first about God's people. Their character was something that God found solid. It was the character that God had tapped into to help them win this battle. See, we have to be actively engaged in our own battles and our own personal life before we expect to conquer greater battles on the battlefield. And you don't have to be victorious in that every moment of every day, but you have to be actively involved and engaged in your own personal battles. You cannot deflect it to somebody else and say that message is for them, that 21 days class is for somebody else. Every single one of you should be in the 21 days. Every single one of you should be in the 21 days. I, I said it. Go back and watch it on YouTube. I don't care. Every single one of you should be in the 21 days because it'll. And when they first presented it, I said the same thing that half of you have said, I don't need that. I don't need that class. I was cleaning out my garage for the 14th time. I don't know how I can collect so much stuff in the last three years. I cleaned out my garage, and there was a, a podcast on toxic relationships, past friendships and toxic relationships. And I kid you not, I stood in the garage. I was mad. I was throwing stuff around in the garage because God was convicting me about some things. And he said, this is for you. Straighten up and get healed because you need to engage in this battle so you can be on the bigger battlefield. If you're never going to engage in any kind of your own battles, then don't expect to be engaged in a bigger battle. You got to take care of business at home first. You got to take care of business at home first. It's not for everybody else and say, yo, you need to do that. No, we all need to do it. Take care of those things. 
That's good preaching right there. You should all be standing up already by now. It was there that God said that I was, I'm going to help them in their battle and fight for us and with us. And in the heat of the battle, God will use you if you let him to win the battle. In this series, we have talked about several points. Reliance on God was number one. Number two, assurance that God is actually with us. Number three, we talked about the, the themes, the three things I, I just talked about. Number four, right now, today, he's, uh, God. the point I have here, what's, what we see with Gideon is that God is shaping him and molding him, and he's doing the same for us. No one likes change. How many would agree by a show of hands? Yeah, there we go. No one likes change. I don't know of anybody that gets up in the morning and says, please show me some changes I need to make today. I can hardly wait. Please, 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 please give me 10 things I need to change today. Now, if you do that, my hats are off to you and you're doing really well. I'm not there. I don't like change. Change does not come easy for anybody. I shared this with you a while back, and I, I've gotten some funny comments. But how many have a how how many have a routine at your house? Routine, routine, routine. Come on, let's be honest. Your shoes are in a, everything's in a certain place. Everything. And then somebody comes over and they touch your stuff. How many have ever had somebody move your stuff around? Don't. Just don't touch my stuff. Don't touch my stuff. The other day I was looking for a pen, a pen that I always use at the house, and her and I got into it because it wasn't there. I told her, I said, where's that pen? I said, don't touch my pen. Don't touch my stuff. You've got 50 pens. I've got one. Don't touch my stuff. Leave it alone. She goes, I needed a pen to write a check. And I said, get your own pen. You've got 50 pens. Where's my pen? Don't touch my stuff. Then I opened the desk, and there was the pen right where I left it. I hate that. How many can relate? Let's be real this morning. But on a bigger, on a bigger schedule, church, on a bigger, excuse me, on a bigger stage, on a bigger stage in our own personal life, sometimes we say to God, don't touch my stuff. Don't touch my stuff, right? He's telling us we need, to, we need to change some things. We need to shape up some things and mold some things and make some difference on a few things. Somebody would say amen to that this morning, right? God is shaping us and molding us into what he has called us to be. Not on accident. It's on purpose. Change doesn't come easy. Correction doesn't come easy. God is, is loving, lovingly correcting us. Do right in his sight. People need to make those necessary changes and the, the molding and the shaping before God and to make a, a commitment with God to say, I'll do what it takes. I may not like it. I may not want to be a part of that. I may not want, to, uh, I may not want you to change. I may not want you to touch my stuff. But if we're going to further uh, um, go farther in our, in our adventure, we need to have God make so, those changes so we're more effective. And say, God, I'll do that, and I'll, and I'll, 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 uh, I'll do what you've asked me to do. And if we're going to go after God like he has called us to go after God, then in turn, our answer will be, yes, God, I'm willing to make those changes. I'm willing to be molded and, and shaped into what you've called me to be. Don't let your past control your present. Many of us today in here have struggled with that. That we've let our, our past control our present. How many would say amen to that this morning? Don't let your past control your present situation because it will affect your future. Some of us are fearful to walk into our destiny because a past hurts. But if we say we believe in a God who heals, then walk in the healing that God has so you can walk out of that past hurt and walk into the present blessing you got to get past some of those things. I'm not telling you just to get over it. I'm saying let's work through it. Do what you got to do. you got to do those things. So as we can't keep hanging on to those past hurts. Someone said, you said, they said this to me, and there's someone said that to me. I, I understand. 
and it does uh, uh, affect us. And sometimes we say things out of emotion. Sometimes we say things out of hunger. Let's be real. But we, if we believe in a God who can heal us, let's believe in a God who can help us to walk in a present blessing. Can we determine in our hearts, church, today, before I move on, that we're not going to let anyone or anything stop you from what God has called you to do? Determine to get it done. Determine to get it done. Last, the fifth item here today is that I want to leave you with that we haven't talked about yet in this series on Gideon. Chapter 7, it talks about the power. I'm going to talk to you for a moment about the power of worship. The power of worship. Watch, we look here, we see here that the angel of the Lord comes to Gideon and tells him that he's a mighty man of valor. He will save Israel from the Midianites. Gideon must have, uh, must have really struggled looking at a small army of 300 against tens of thousands. They tell him, tell him the, the plan is to blow trumpets and reveal their torches. They shout the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. The Lord sends the army of Midian into chaos and terror. The Midianites turn on each other, typical, and flee. And God receives the glory. I know that the Midianites had a religious spirit. I know that for a fact. Because they turned on each other because things weren't going their way. Come on. Come on. Seriously. You know what? We talked about that last week, and I'm not going to belabor that today because I think I probably went too far with it last week. But it is what it is. But a religious spirit will not be corrected. Come on. If you're legalistic or you have a religious spirit on you about something, you will not stand any sort of type of correction at all whatsoever. You'll be the first to object. Mm, they hurt my feelings. No, no. If we want to be molded and shaped into the presence of God and to be used like a mighty warrior, whatever correction may come from a godly source, whether it's God himself, through a devotion, through a leader, through a Bible study, you'll say, I need to fix this. I need to fix this, and I need to fix it now. I need to fix it now. Well, Pastor, have you ever been? I'm corrected all the time. In fact, I meet with somebody once a month outside of my whole world here. I meet with somebody, a, a mentor, and I met with him over the weekend on the phone, and he brought three things to me that I needed to work on. Man, I was mad after that conversation. <laughs> God began to stir my heart and say, you know what? He is right. He's a godly man. You need to make some of those changes. If you're asking to change, if you're asking for more, and then God shows you something, and then we're like, oh, what? <laughs> what? God, please use us in a greater way. Okay, let's change this. No. Come on. Am I getting anywhere today? Hey, I'm not getting on you. I'm getting, I'm not giving you a hand out. I'm giving you a hand up for all of us. I'm there with you. The Midianites flee because they attacked each other, and then God receives the glory. What does he do? What does God, Gideon do throughout all this? He obeys God. Sounds the trumpet to point to God's work, not his own. Not his own. Worship, how does worship play into this? Right before this battle, Gideon goes to spy on the camp. He overhears soldiers talking. One tells of a dream of destruction at the Gideon's hand, at Gideon's hand. And then in verse 15, it says, as soon as Gideon heard the telling of the dream and its interpretation, he worshiped. And then he returned to the camp of Israel and said, Arise, for the Lord has given the host of Midian, the host, the boss, the leader. See, we're too busy going after everybody that says or does or does us, does us wrong. Let's go after the real source, the spirit of offense. Let's go after that. 
If we start chasing everything down and every little rumor and every little heartache and every little offense, we're going to be, no wonder Christians are so exhausted. Come on. I told you to put your seatbelt on. I'm not mad at anybody. Everybody just chill and don't send me any emails. We're trying to grow together. So am I. Wow, well, we want to do this. Then let's do this. Let's go after the host of the trouble, not after everything else. But the small detail here is Gideon worshiped. Watch. Here's the sequence. I'm, I'm going to be done. I may even actually be done early, and then I'm going to add those minutes on to next week as well. <laughs> the sequence is this. Number one, obey. Number two, dream. Number three, travel. Number four, worshiped. Number five, victory. In that order, he had to obey, and then he listened to what, they were, what the enemy was saying in the dream that God had given to the enemy. What? How does that work? The enemy received a dream from God. Huh. Think about that. That's why we, as a church, to not live in fear. I'm just going to preach here for just a second. The reason why there's so much chaos going on in our culture today in America is because the enemy and those around the enemy and all the plans are taking place. I believe with all of my heart that God has given some of them a revelation of what is to come. And that is why they are so nervous about America's church today. Because the America's church, while other people are ripping on the church, God is saying, I am preparing my church for a greater victory. And the enemy is working overtime. And the host of all that is working overtime. I know it sounds a little off and a little out there, but I want to give us fair warning and an exciting time that we are going to be seeing times of rejoicing and praising God because God gave the enemy a dream that the church is going to be victorious in the last days. So why are we all stressed out about what's happening? Come on. What's happening is that God is revealing his plan, his purpose, his presence, and a way to overcome. Gideon shows up and absolutely hears what the dream was to the enemy. Wow, what a trip. But he had to travel to get there. Can you imagine if God said to you, uh, Johnette, I want you to go over to this particular area that's just full of chaos and the strategy of the enemy and I want you to go and I want you to listen to what's going on. You know what the success would have to be? Is that she went from point A to point B to listen to the dream. Gideon received victory because he was obedient to go down to the enemy's camp. And it is time for the church to step back in to the enemy's camp and find out what's going on so we're more effective to see victory in these last days. So in the small but important detail, God causes worship by revealing himself and his plan. Yeah, we're handing out water next week. This year, I'll be honest with you, this year has been a little bit of a struggle to get people to sign up this year. I know people are busy. I understand that. But if we can have an encounter, and last year was a perfect example. We had many encounters, even in a couple of hours that people served, of prayer and discussing God. That's just water. No, no, no. Here's a bottle of water. It's going to be hot. And I want to share, what, what's this from? Is it free? Yes, it's free. But it's an opportunity to share some joy and some love with other people. So don't come to me <laughs> and say, Pastor, we're not doing enough in our, in our community. <laughs> 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 so
So sign up, even if it's just for an hour. Sign up. Well, wow, we need we need to do spiritual warfare in our community. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm busy. So is the enemy. He is busy. He has overtime. God, well, I don't want to be guilted into doing it. Well, if that works for me. I'm good with that if you're guilted. I, I'm good with that. And that's a lot of water. Gideon worships God because of what he is doing. He reveals to Gideon in this time a dream, the dream and how it was going to be. He told him ahead of time. So Gideon is so paranoid and so uptight about so many things. He, he, he asked not once but twice to put out fleeces before God. Right? Okay? And then God in his mercy says, why don't you go down to the camp and go here for yourself so you'll calm down. That's how I look at it. So now he's reassuring him three different times that it's going to be fine. I've called you to do this. It's going to be fine. And then he says in his humbleness, he, sa and he worships God after he hears about the dream. He found, finds his faith on God's promises. If the word of God and the miracle of the fleece were not enough to convince Gideon of this promise, that he can believe in the victory that was coming, then he had to go back and he had to research himself, his heart of being molded and shaped. The response is of trust and joy, worship. I want to share with you really quickly before we go. In fact, I'm going to end early. Stand to your feet, if you will, this morning. I'm tracking the minutes. I'll tell my story as soon as that's off, off the camera. Tell me when it's off. Absolutely. Give up. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, 